Hello guys, welcome back. This is C Segno and I'll be going through this May slash June 2022 um C Sec Pass Paper 2 for Biology RA. So therefore we guys could see we were just going through a few questions so you guys could see what's going on, alright? So in question one it says germination involves the breakdown of food stores in a seed. So we are talking about figure one would have shown that the results of an experiment where we would have seen that 50 germinating seeds uh, were, ex were exposed to, we say, varying the concentration of pollutant in water. So we have seen that the germination of 50 seeds in a polluted water, guys. So we are talking about figure um, here. We're going to talk about we are going to see the germinations in 50. So therefore, this is the number of germination seeds. So we are talking about 50. So the rank here would be 50. All right. Good. So we are seeing that we have the distilled water. We have the concentration of the water percent. So here we have 50. Right. We have 1, 2, 5, 10, 20, 30, 50. All right. So we are talking about the percentage. All right, good. So we guys could see um, along the diagram here, we are seeing that the germination. So for figure one, the germination of 50 seeds in different concentrations of polluted water. So we're just going to here go ahead and list out the four factors other than pollution that can affect the germination of a seed. So first thing first, you can see that for one factor here, we have seen that moisture, uh, I would say oxygen concentration, temperature and pH so we are talking about its pH level all right and also we have seen that through light we can mention that through light is usually inhibits so we are trying to say that through light it inhibits uh, most seeds from the germination so there's a light factor so we are talking about the light factor so not having enough light can he inhibits I would say inhibits the most seeds from germinate so we are talking about the lights would have prevent um, germination we also see here another factor so the four factors will be moisture oxygen concentration and ph we're seeing that it also um i would say influences the germination seeds um such as we are talking about the begonia so the begonia is we're talking about the germination in some seeds how the factors there would see that it would affect the germination of the seeds. Alright, good. So we have received four marks for this question. So I'm just gonna move along to the other question. So it says state the main aim of the experiment. So what is the experiment of the germination here? And we would have seen that it to be investigate the effect of water pollution on germination. Alright, so we are talking about the effect of the water pollution on germination on sea germination perhaps all right good so i received one more for that question and we're moving along to another question so here we're seeing that it says using figure one explain how the concentration of polluted water affects germinations at each of the following concentrations so we're talking about one percent so if we're going to look back on the i would say the graph here let's go back to the figure one percent that would be the water, all right? Good. So 1% would have seen that it would followed by like 50% um, percent of seedling germination at this point. So we're just gonna get the accurate point to show you. For one, we can see that it had 50. So we are talking about the 50 um, um, seedling, all right? For two, we'd have like around, I would say 45, all right? From five, we'd have seen that it would be around, I would say, 43 44 around that point all right well we're just gonna move along to the questions so it has seen that it would normally had like um 50 percent of the seedling germination at this point same as when there was like zero um percent of pollution therefore we'd have seen that there were no decrease in the number of the germination seed so we are talking about we are what we are talking about guys we are not seeing any i would say any decrease in the number of the seeds being germinated therefore we also seen that the seed would have normally like they absorb i would say the negligibility i of the amount of pollutant uh, pollutant perhaps so we are talking about the negligibly we are talking about the i would say the percentages of how much um i would say were absorbed about the amount of water so we are seeing that the seed were are normally absorbed 
are based on the amount um, of water was there during the process of the, the water the seeds being germinated all right all right good so here we are talking about 50 percent so it has seen that it's 50 percent now would be only around like 20 out of the 50 seeds germinated at this point so what we are talking about here about 50 percent we are talking about we have seen that here is like 20 out of the 50 percent i would say are 50 out of the 50 seeds were germinated at this point normally we'd have seen that this would like due to the seedling i would say absorbing the pathogen the particulates in the water are particulates so we are talking about the absorb how much i would say of the water at this point were absorbed during the pathogen or the particulates in the water so we are seeing that the seeds was absorbed in all right good so here for the other questions it says the research team provided the result of the experiment to a farmer so they're talking about we need to state two ways in which um, the farmer can use the data to improve his farming practices so we are talking about one seclude so secluded meaning we are germinating the seedling from water sources i would say that are likely to prone um, to pollution it therefore is seeing that agricultural are pesticides we can even say runoff therefore place them in i would say are through uh, you know to build a barrier around them the another ways you can use for the farmer to use data uh, to improve the farming practices is to in install a um, filtration system so when you're talking about install filtration system we are talking about this will also help to remove the pollutant from water before allowing the seed to become i would say are in contact uh, with it all right good so the other question here it says figure one clearly place the x on the bar represent of the control so we were talking about the x all right so we can see that it says give one reason for your answer so therefore the x guys would have seen this would be proves that no other factor but water pollution concentrate that would normally affect the rate of the seed germination all right good so we're going to move along to the another questions all right so here we are talking about mina so mina investigated um, the growth of the some seedling and made comparisons with growth patterning a human baby over 30 days period i would say we have seen that the data are provided in table one so we are seeing that damn um, table one will be the, the data collected to investigate the growth in seedling and human baby so there's a difference between human baby and seedling we're talking about the days we have seen the days here the height of the seedling in 70 meter the length of the baby in 70 meter as well all right so at five at i would say at day five we have the the height of a ceiling would be 10 centimeter um in the days for days five in a human i would say baby the length was like 45 centimeter so we are seeing that in most unlikely we have the, the investigation between the growth so we have seen a human baby's growth is being grown faster than at the height of a ceiling all right good so but it says on the grid provided on page seven plot the data obtained for both of the ceiling i would say both the ceiling and the baby using the same scale and axes provide a suitable or even provide a suitable title for the graph so what you're gonna we could say the graph would be the comparison um between the ceiling and the baby and the human baby over 30 days so this would be the title of the graph guys the graph showing comparison um between we can say between or the comparison of growth in um seedlings and baby over 30 days all right so we are talking about the difference between the baby and the ceiling so the ceiling here would be the x and the baby would be the red dot all right so just that is our uh, key all right so the x here would be the i would say the ceiling so we'd have seen from 10 rising up to 30 but we have seen that um during the human baby here is from i'd say 45 moving up to you know straight back up to around 70 but it's not uh, really on the line of 70 so it's below 70 so there would be like 64 
64 around that point all right but we are seeing that this would be the graph that we have plot you know to outline the difference between the, the growth of the seedling and the baby over 30 days all right good so as you guys could see we are we are plotting all right so this is the plot good those are the days let me just move along all right, good. So here we are seeing it says suggest so two ways in which um, the growth of the baby differs from the growth of the ceiling. So we are talking about the difference. So one way is we have seen that the growth of the ceiling was mostly, I would say, constant increase rate. So we are talking about, but the baby would simple meaning the baby would have a, I would say, a sharper increase at, at the at day 15. Therefore, we have seen that the baby height was always greater than the seedlings, and that is a fact. All right. Also, maybe we can say the entire length of the baby was taken, where we are talking about the possibility of the only stems, or as we can say, the ceiling was not, you know, accurately uh, measured, but not like roots. All right, but we are seeing that here, yeah, the question would be so. Just one similarity is we can say between the growth of the baby and the growth of the ceiling. So we are seeing that um, one similarity would have seen that they both increase in size over um, time at fairly similar rates we'd have seen that especially do we like with like say five the days five between ten we'd have seen that it would have an increase in three centimeter all right so there's a difference between the five to ten we'd have seen there would be a slightly um increase in three centimeter oh, good so here that a question says describe our seedling and i would say height is measure using a ruler so we are seeing that the ruler can be placed, uh, I say, parallel um, to the ceiling, main stem, uh, main stem, I would say, sorry, and we at eye level. So we are talking about the ruler can also be planted into the soil to keep it upright. All right. So that would be we describe how the height is measuring um, using a ruler. All right. Good. So we are seeing that suggest so one example that shows um, that the increase in a cell is not always due to the growth. So we are talking the reason why we are not seeing that you know the cells is not just always um, always due to growth. So we are seeing that either we can say they would say the gemity. So we are talking about the gemity slash the production of the white cells, you know, to help I would say fight an infection. Therefore, we are seeing that regeneration or I would say replacement of dead or lost tissue. For example, we are talking about like skin cells or red blood cells. So therefore, we are seeing that you know the GMT uh, production would help you know um, white like help fight against um, an infection. All right, good, good. So we're moving along to the other questions. So, so just one factor that I would say should be considered um, before making a conclusion from a data in table one. So we are seeing that the ceilings now, guys, would be like the light source that should be directly from above. Therefore, we are seeing that it should ensure that the stems are not bending all right so you're keeping the stems intact therefore like for either we can see like animal growth we normally see that it occurs i would say in all region whereas we can talk about like growth in plants that would normally occurs in i would say uh, mary stems all right good moving forward so that we see one point for that question so number two here says define each of the following terms so we're talking about um sub sub um sorry we're talking about the saprophytic all right so the sub the saprophytic we're talking about the saprophytic um nutrition good so we're talking about the sapro um phytic um nutrition we're talking about the breakdown of organic matter into organic i would say it's inorganic matters uh, we are normally um such as like carbon dioxide Alright, so we are even talking about the heterotrophic the the nutrition. Now we are talking about the process of consuming, I would say, another organisms for nutrition. We are also talking about the autotrophic. Um, so the autotrophic nutrition, now guys, we are talking about the process of organisms using inor inorganic uh, matter to produce food, such as like, for example, we are talking about sugar. So we are seeing that they would be we are using inorganic matter to produce food. Alright, good. So you're talking about the table here in figure, I would say table two, identify the two, so I would say sapro, 
saprotics and their food sources. So the saprotics here and their their food sources. We are talking about the saprotic, uh, saproti. Uh, we are talking about the bacteria, and uh, we are talking about bacteria um, along with the food sources. Are uh, we are talking about carcasses so um, carcasses would be the food sources for bacteria fungi would be the food sources uh, for bread so we have received four marks for that questions and it's pretty simple here it's not hard right so we have seen here it says explain two process by which raw materials we can says ref are required for making nutrition we reach the level of I L C F a plant. So we're talking about carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide enters the stomach and we are talking about the leaf due to the process of diffusion. So we are seeing that carbon dioxide can move from a higher concentration in the atmosphere to a lower concentration in the leaves. And we have seen that water enter the plants through the I would say the roots um through osmosis. We have seen that the water is now like then I would say transported to the leaf um, by transfer, by transpiration, um, by I would say put in the xylem, uh, moving it up to the leaf. All right, good. So you're talking about here. It says young seedling use all the nutrients um, stored in the cutland. Cutland. So you're talking about cutland to start their growth. You're even talking about explaining the process by which the seedling made uh, more nutrients. All right, to continue their growth. All right, good. So here we have seen those stuff.